This is now the third video on thirds in the bridging videos between GCSE and A level. And we're gonna look at uh, the probably the most um, challenging part, but really quite interesting. Now mathematicians uh, hate most things, and one thing they really dislike is having a third in the denominator of a fraction. A third is irrational. And what we try and do is call, uh, we call it rationalizing the denominator. So we're turning it from an irrational in the denominator to a rational number and there's a couple of little tricks we need to do what i'm going to present in this video is well there are only really two scenarios where we need to think about rationalizing if you want to look at rationalizing as the division of thirds absolutely fine to do that if we've got one over root a all we need to do to rationalize this is multiply top and bottom by the root itself we know root a times by root a is just a. One times by root a is going to be root a. This does not change if we have one over and then a value, uh, and we'll just call it b root a. All we need to do is multiply top and bottom by root a. If you have no addition or subtraction sign between the b and the a, simply multiply it by the root. So what we're going to now get with that one, 1 times by root a is going to be root a. Root a times by root a is a, a times b, and we'll get a, b. We now have a rational, remember, it's a rational denominator. But a third is an irrational number, it's like pi. Pi is probably the first irrational number you've dealt with. We're now dealing with a rationalized denominator. Um, and when you get onto complex numbers way down in the, the future, complex numbers are not deemed to be um, real um, all the time. So you realize the denominator. Um, and in this case, we rationalize it. So this is the scenario one. It's simply when there's no addition. This is, uh, so we'll call it scenario one. There's no addition between them. So let's look at an example. One over root three. All we need to do to rationalize this, multiplying top and bottom by the root 3, and we get root 3 over 3. It would not differ one jot if we now had, and I'm, in fact, I'll do this. Say we got 5 over root 3. Uh, that was meant to be a 3. Root 3, root 3, so we get 5 root 3 over 3. What about 6 over root 3? Okay, top and bottom by root 3, and we get 6 root 3 over 3, and then we can cancel just to simply 2 root 3. So there we go. That's scenario 1. You only need to know two scenarios. The other is when we have, for example, 1 over a plus root b. And we'll look at this in depth. We started touching on it last time. All we need to do is multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate. If you don't like that word, simply think of the opposite. You leave the numbers the same, but you simply change the sign. Now, what happens here is we get the difference of squares and the middle terms cancel out to make our denominator rational. So let's look at this. On the top, we just leave that alone. It's just gonna be a minus root b. On the bottom, a times by a is a squared. A times by negative root b is negative a root b. Positive root b times by a is plus a root b. And then we're going to be left with negative root b squared, which is just going to be negative b. And we will look at this, because this doesn't really mean an awful lot at the moment. But what you will see is at least, we've all we've got now left in here is a squared minus b. As v's have cancelled each other out, plus a root b minus a root b disappears. So rather than a theory, let's look at this in practice. So these ones are nice and straightforward. We have simple um, values. So what we're gonna have now, two over root two, multiplying top and bottom by that root. We don't have to worry about the conjugate, there's no addition or subtraction. Two root two on top, over root two times by two on the bottom, which is gonna be two, those will cancel off, leaving us now with root 2. An interesting thing that you'll learn uh, later down the line is that cosine cos of 45 degrees 
is given to be 1 over root 2 or when rationalised root 2 over 2 so working between these is key ok if these two things are identical sine of 45 is cos of uh, 30 degrees is root 3 over 2 which is already a rational um, fraction so we're now rationalised that's now a rational fraction because it's over 1 ok let's look at uh, some of these they're not too strenuous so 14 over root 2 we get 14 root 2 over root 2 times by root 2 which of course is just going to be 2 so we can cancel that and give 2 so it becomes 7 with a 14 and 2 cancelling off root 2 if we had for example um, 5 over 2 root 10 we multiply top and bottom by root 10 don't need to multiply it by 2 root 10 times by root 10 is 10 10 times 2 is 20 so we get 5 root 10 over 20 or root 10 over 4 just simplify so nice and straightforward and just be careful because sometimes they try and trick you and they'll put something really stupid in like um, 6 over root 25 and of course you go and rationalise it shooting off and then just realise that was actually 5 so just be careful um, but it's fairly logical right let's now look at this scenario slightly more involved so we've got 2 plus root 5 over root 5 again we've only got a root 5 in the denominator so that's all we have to worry about top and bottom by root 5 so expanding here we're going to have 2 root 5 and then we're going to have plus 5 now all over root 5 times by uh, root 5 which is going to be 5 and we could write this as 2 fifths root 5 plus 1 if you want to split that fraction up sometimes it's not even worth expanding the top out um, but this is a simplified fraction again you might want to just write this as root 5 into the quantity 2 plus root 5 and leave it alone entirely up to you but it's all about rationalizing that denominator so let's now um, start with something have they got something quite nice um, let's have a look at one okay we'll do this one I was looking for something a touch easier but never mind 4 minus root 2 over 1 plus root 2 so let's multiply top and bottom by the conjugate because we got a plus in there and we'll make it a minus 1 minus root 2 1 minus root 2 so we need to be able to foil so on the bottom 1 times 1 is 1 after a while in the exam you might have to initially show your plus root 2 minus root 2 but what you'll soon see is that this is just that squared subtract away this squared so it's going to be 1 minus 2 hopefully you've picked that up it's this number squared minus this one squared and when I say squared it's the third squared so let's expand the top we're going to have 4 minus 4 root 2 minus another root 2 and then we're going to have minus times minus is a plus root 2 times by root 2 is 2 so it's going to become plus 2 so 2 plus 4 is 6 minus 5 root 2 we've got minus 4 root 2 minus another root 2 and this is all over minus 1 we could of course just multiply through by negative 1 here and write 5 root 2 minus 6 which looks significantly I want to say prettier but that's a little sad if you think here if we simply multiply by negative 1 this will turn to a positive 1 that will turn to negative 6 that will turn to a positive 5 root 2 so just be aware that that's an option for you ok let's look at um, what have we got here this one right here so that was quite a nice one nice and straightforward 1 minus root 3 1 plus root 3 1 plus root 3 so the top is just going to be 1 plus root 3 now if we expand this long form we're going to get 1 and then we're going to get plus root 3 minus root 3 and then minus root 3 times by root 3 which is minus root 9 but you know that's just 3 so we've got 1 plus root 3 
and then all it is is this number squared subtract away the square of the third so it's going to be 1 minus 3 so we end up now with 1 plus root 3 over negative 2 so 1 plus root 3 over minus 2 or you could simply say minus 1 half the quantity 1 plus root 3 so there we go some of them get slightly more involved let's look at this one 7 minus root 7 this is, this is a quite interesting one. And then 7 plus root 7. So we need to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. So it's going to become 7 minus root uh, 7. So we'll get 7 minus root 7. And then 7 minus root 7. Now, a couple of ways you can deal with this. I'm going to just look at it in one particular uh, one particular way to begin with and look at it in the long way. We'll leave a, a nice little trick that you can do um, until we do the AS videos. But if we look at this doing it long form now, what we're going to have is 49 minus 7. And then we're going to have 49 on the top. We're going to have minus 7 root 7 minus another 7 root 7, which is going to give us minus 14 root 7. And then we're going to have minus, uh, minus is a plus, plus 7. So you can see we can end up with 56 uh, minus root uh, 14 root 7 all over 42. Okay, And you can see that a common factor of 7 can still be taken out. So it becomes 8 plus 2 root 7 Okay. Uh, all over. In fact, 14 will come out of there, won't it? We can take 14 out of there. So we can make this 4 minus root 7 over 3. And as stated, there is a little natty trick we could have done here, but we'll leave that for another time. Essentially, that's where you would get to if you did it the long way around. So there we go. This is rationalising thirds. The idea of rationalising is to avoid having the third in the denominator. If we've got a simple case where we've got the, uh, the third with no additional subtraction between it, simply multiply top and bottom by that third value. If we've now got uh, an addition or subtraction between them, multiply by the conjugate, which will create a difference of squares, which will get rid of your third value in the denominator. What we'll do, we'll go on and look at how we can com uh, combine or convert between indices and thirds in a later video.